The process of soldering is taking two or more wires and joining them together, then taking a soldering iron and melting the solder into the wires joining those two wires permanently. back to the garage, the place where we are making your classic car, your dream classic car. Hey, if this is your first time here, I would love to have you subscribe. I'm putting out how-to videos for the weekend mechanic and talking about upgrades for the classic car community and especially upgrades on my 1975 Ford Bronco. Now today what we're talking about is solder. Now whenever I do a big job on my engine, I always tell people leave the wiring messy because then that way you aren't sad when you have to go back through and cut it all up because you forgot to wire something together or you wired something incorrectly. So I always tell people, leave it messy, and then when you're done, go back through and clean it all up. Well, it's been a couple of months now since I installed my Edelbrock Pro Flow 4, and so now I'm gonna go back and clean everything up. Now, when I was installing my painless wiring harness a few years ago, I, I, I kept using these, and these are like those, uh, you know, heat shrink butt connectors things. You put the wires in, you crimp them, and then you heat it up with a uh, heat gun, and it kind of shrinks it together. And these are good. They're definitely better than just using electrical tape or like the at-home uh, twisty nut thing. These are definitely better than that, but this is not the best option. The best option, if you're doing any kind of electrical work, is soldering the wires together and then covering it with some heat shrink tubing. You just don't want to leave any area in your engine where it could start a fire, where it could start a spark, or where it could just trip a fuse and your engine won't start and you don't know why. So that's why doing proper electrical work on your vehicle is so important. Now the tools that I use when I am doing soldering is one, you want to get a good soldering iron. Now this is a great one. It's a Weller, which a lot of people have said a lot of really good things about. Uh, and it's just a little handheld unit. It has some LED lights on there. And again, I'll put links in the description below with all of this stuff so you can check it out as well. The next thing that you want is a good stand for your soldering gun. And the reason that I went with this one is because it's actually pretty beefy, like it's heavy. And so when you're soldering or when you put your gun in there, you don't feel like the gun is just gonna topple over and lean up against something and start a fire. It's it's pretty great. For me, I don't think that sponge is very worthy, so I always just grab a sponge from my wife's kitchen and I use that to wipe my soldering gun off with. Next thing you'll need is good solder. Now, there's a lot of debate and obviously lead-free solder is better for the environment but lead solder works better. And then you need a pair of wire strippers. Now, I love these things, and you can see that uh, there's all kinds of different gauges for these. This is a Klein Tools wire stripper. It's a little bit more expensive, but man, is it worth the money uh, compared to just the wire stripper where you twist it around the wire. One of the other things that I'll use a lot of times is this. It's a little helping hand. And this is super nice because you can put the wire in there and then it holds the wire for you while you solder. So it's literally a helping hand. It gives you an extra set of hands. The next thing that you're gonna need is some heat shrink tubing and a heat gun. Now this is a Wagner gun, but this makes quick work of any heat shrink tubing that you have when you're doing your solders. I definitely recommend getting something like this, but you can also use a butane torch, or if you're in a bind, just grab your wife's hair dryer. The last thing that you wanna use are some good safety glasses. Make sure that you're being safe while you do this. You don't want anything popping up into your eyeball and making you go blind. All right, so now I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how I solder, and I'm gonna do it here instead of at the engine because it's easier to see than my dark engine bay. Now the first thing that I always do uh, is put the heat shrink on my wire first. 
And I actually say that, but I always forget this step. Like I always will finish my solder and then go to grab the heat shrink and realize that I never put it on the wire. So then I have to cut it and redo it all over again. So for those of you that feel my pain, and yes, I'm just doing this on a, on a practice wire here um, so that you can get an idea for what I'm doing. All right, so I got my heat shrink on and now I'm gonna cut my wire. So I'm gonna take my wire cutters here that have the 12 uh, wire gauge setting and I'm gonna go back maybe about a half an inch and then just chop it off. And I love these because they make a nice clean cut. And I'm gonna do this to both sides. Now what I'm gonna do once I have my wires exposed is I'm actually gonna fan them out so that I can put them together all right, so now I'm just gonna put the wiring together and then I'm just gonna twist so that it makes a really good connection. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to put these wires together with nothing sticking up and poking that can poke through the heat shrink. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put them in my helping hand. Now what I'm doing is I'm holding my soldering iron up against the wires. Now for thicker wires, it's gonna take a little bit longer for this to heat up. For thinner wires, it's gonna take a lot less time. Uh, and if you have a bigger soldering gun or soldering tool, then it's obviously gonna be quicker as well. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put my solder onto the wire so that it melts through the wires and gets completely in them. And when you're finished, you should have a really nice even solder across the wires. Then what you wanna do is let it cool down for a minute and then pull your heat shrink tubing around where you just soldered and then hit it with a heat gun. And just like that, you've made a strong, watertight connection for your wires that's gonna last a really long time. And remember, after every time you solder, you wanna make sure you clean your tip off so it's clean for the next time you use it. Another thing that I like to do when I am doing anything under the engine bay is I like to make stuff look nice and neat and tidy. Now, if you saw my video where I installed my ProFlow EFI, you know that I left a lot of wires uh, just out and exposed. No, no metal exposed, no actual wire, but just, you know, the, the actual wire itself because, you know, I don't want to do an install and then have to cut into my nice, beautiful loomed wire. And, and so that's why the last step that I do is I grab some of this loom. And now this stuff's pretty cheap. You can get it at Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below uh, where you can check that out as well. But I just like to wrap all the wires and then clip this with zip ties. One thing, you know, my engine's pretty dark, so it kind of just blends all the red wires into the engine bay. Like you can't notice them as much, but two, it just kind of cleans everything up. I feel like this stuff gives a nice clean feel uh, and it just makes you feel proud about your engine. It makes you feel proud to, you know, have done the work that you do. You don't pop the hood and you're like, look what I installed. And people are like, oh, I can, I can tell there's a lot of wires there. You know, it just, it's a, it's a nice upgrade. So definitely check that out. Uh, but that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video helped you. If it was a help, give it a thumbs up. But hopefully that will help you guys as you are doing these installs in your engine, on your Bronco, or on your classic car. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.